All right. Welcome, YouTube. You've entered a tactical droid knife review. And this is the beginning of a new, um, uh, hopefully a new series of knife videos I'm going to do. I'm going to lightheartedly call them something other than guest blade. I'm going to be calling it knives worth more than my house. Now, there's a reason for that. Right now, I'm in between homes and I'm living in a fifth wheel, so I'm actually not lying to y'all. This thing is worth more than my house. So there you go. A little backstory on that. Uh, some of you might know what this knife is already, looking at it. Um, it it's certainly a work of art. This knife does not belong to me. A buddy of mine has helped me out with this. He's got some real gorgeous ones in his safe uh, and that he carries every now and then. And... He said, oh man, you do that knife uh, blog or um, YouTube videos, why don't, you, why don't you go ahead and do some videos on them? I said, oh right, are you kidding? That is awesome. Friends, you gotta love our friends, you know, you just got to. Uh, this particular one, this is a, a Alan Elishowitz is the designer, and um, this one is called the, let's see, it's called the Dress Saboteur, um, and he makes a couple different ones, uh, different same design, different styles. See if I can get some good focusing here. Little macros. That beautiful wood. The materials he chooses are just, they're just insane. Uh, you maybe wouldn't think, oh, that goes with that, or that would go good with that, but it, brought together, they're just gorgeous. They're absolutely gorgeous. Um, the knife, let's give some specs on the knife first. It is, uh, let's see, it's actually a four and a quarter inch blade. That is a big blade. Um, I'll bring another knife out here in a minute to give, it, give you a comparison because I have kind of medium to small size hands. That's how it looks in the hand. Uh, yeah, four and a quarter inch blade. The overall knife is uh, eight and a half inches. So that really gives you an idea. That is almost an exact blade ratio to handle ratio. I'll show you that as I close it up. Look at that. He uses up the entire length of that handle material all the way to the end. It's beautiful. Okay, he's got, um, he's using the Chad Nichols dual, um, it's a dual finish stainless steel. Um, beautiful Damascus. And it's interesting because if I can get a good mat a view here, close up, you can see it on the flats there right there and then when you do when he did the hollow ground you know it just brings out that beautiful Damascus finish and it is it's a multi grind uh, you've got the hollow grind here and then you've got actually the Tanto surface here that's also hollow grind and he's got this decorative swedge on the top there that's really nice um, the blade steel like I said is that uh, uh, Chad Nichols stainless Damascus uh, let's see, the bolsters here, these bolsters are titanium, and they, they're treated, it's a real dark, rich titanium, I'm not sure what the surface treating is to get it to be like that. Uh, the clip is not, the clip is like a naked titanium. It doesn't look like it, um, let's see where it's matching up, I don't know, that, that might just, that might just be to break up the lines there a little bit, I'm not sure. Anyway, if you do look at the uh, if you do look at this wood, and I believe I gotta look this one up. What is this called? It is called bump bump desert ironwood. This desert ironwood. It uh, you know when the light hits it, it looks like Damascus steel. So this is like Damascus wood separated by titanium into the Damascus steel. I just think that's a great uh, juxtaposition there. Feels great in the hand. It's not a big handle, even though it's a you know it's a four and a half inch blade or four four and a quarter inch blade. The handle doesn't feel that substantial. I mean, it feels good, but it almost feels like you're about to run out at the end there. Very nice. Jimping on this thing. I actually really like the jimping on the side. Everything's flush. I don't know if you can see that. It's flush all the way across. Yet. It's very aggressive just underneath, and your hand digs right in. And there's no problem digging your hand in for the jimping there. And this is not a traditional choil up front here, but you can 
it does function as a choil and it gives you the ability to reach all the way to the end of the blade jimping that he's got going there to do well whatever it is you want to do to really choke up on it though another look at that beautiful blade and then on the surface here right on the on the sharpening bevel don't know if you can see it I'm gonna try and zoom as best I can but you can see the lines of the Damascus Ah, it's not gonna work just can't get it to focus that good beautiful beautiful uh, let's see here another another couple things the thumb stud fully customized you see that like kind of a gear pattern on there and when you activate it um, it's it's toothy but it's not something that's gonna tear you up and it's got very positive grip um, you I mean you want to be able to get it you want to be able to hook it and it's not gonna separate your you know your finger for your from your thumbnail or whatever and it gets it every time it's actually I like it it's preferable to some of the other designs that are rounded, you know, and you can sometimes, if the detent's too strong, just kind of uh, lip your, uh, or anyway, you know what I'm saying. He also has some backside jimping, so if you were to go backside with this, you can lock up really good with the thumb for backside. Now, he does have a lot of tactical features on here. Um, he is, he's got a background in the military. Um, it's, it's colorful, too. He's been doing martial arts his whole life. Um, he spent time in the military. He was a Marine forward observer, um, and then a, a, a forward observer recon for a recon unit. And those guys got to get down and dirty, and they got to know how to fight and, and defend themselves with their hands. It's, it's amazing. Those guys are real studs. Um, so you, you see a lot of that. His combat and tactical designs work their way into these gorgeous knives. It's kind of a neat um, uh, coupling of the tactical side with the artistic beautiful side in the materials that he gets these are just incredible titanium standoffs I don't know if you can see in there but uh, he does have some some lightning holes uh, drilled out to lighten it a little bit which he actually does now to give you an example this is a six and a little over a six ounce knife I think it's like 6.2 um, this knife here that I've got this is the Will Moon Mark 6 and weighs a little bit more um, I believe this one actually yeah, I might be wrong I think maybe they do both weigh right around 6.2 ounces even though it's a longer knife um, just put them next to each other here. That gives you an idea of the size of it. You know that Mark VI is huge. Um, and this, you know, the handle size makes it look tinier, but the blades are almost identical. The blades are both um, over four inches, especially if you go from bolster to bolster. I think I think that the, uh, the Elishowitz is a four and a quarter inch blade, and the Will Moon is a four and a half inch blade. So there you have it. Uh, let me get a few knives in here that you might uh, recognize everyday knives. This is the, of course, Paramilitary 2. Give you a little size comparison. Should put this in the back here. And then that there. Butt to butt. Alright, knock it off, Jim. Butt to butt. Uh, it looks like they're about almost identical. They probably are. You know, and this is a four and a quarter inch blade, whereas this is a, uh, I think this is a three and three eighths or 3 and 7 eighths blade. Awesome blade. Uh, here's another one. This is a Chris, Chris Reeve um, Umnum Zone. Another pretty substantial blade. So it gives you an idea you know, how, how big these blades are, thickness wise. Uh, pretty on par. They just reach that thickness with uh, a different, different material combinations. Titanium. Now, um, let's see if you can see up in here all the details all the way into come on focus for me there you go you see the pattern that Damascus pattern that just goes all the way through all the way to the lockup and the lockup there is about 40 percent 35 percent I don't know how well broken in this knife was but I've only had it tonight uh, playing with it a little bit and it feels like it's breaking really good actually I think he's gonna like it when he gets it back 
um, didn't want me to lube it or anything like that. I, I would never do that without, uh, uh, I wouldn't even do it with permission because I don't know how to treat some of these more exotic materials. But this, this knife is just gorgeous. And if there's any chance you get to, uh, um, to handle one of these knives and to just open it up and appreciate the artistic man hours that go into this. And I'm trying to get a good focus here. That is Alan Elishowitz's uh, gold medallion that he sinks in there and that's solid gold. Nice little touch. I believe you can swap the stud left to right, but the, the pocket clip carry is set up uh, specifically for right hand carry. Now I'll give you a couple last minute shots of this. Um, let's see, we got titanium liners. That beautiful, um, uh, beautiful Chad Nichols dual finish uh, stainless steel. Hollow grind. Titanium standoffs. Titanium pivot. All customized. Titanium bolsters there. You see that he does this like uh, orange peel or frosting type uh, surface just to the edges just to give it that extra bit of bling. Titanium pocket clip. Kind of seems like it's out of place. I'm still not, not sure about that. I think the clip would look better if it were this color, but I'm not. I ain't no knife designer, so who am I to say? Awesome standoffs. There you can see in the background the little hollowed out bits. All right, well, that's it tonight. Uh, I'd like to thank my buddy for uh, hooking me up on this. He uh, uh, chooses to remain anonymous, and that just that's fine with me. That works for me. I just like, and uh, I know he knows that I like to like um, uh, share this stuff with people because, you know, not everybody can get their hands on this stuff. You know, I'm naming this segment knives that are worth more than my house because hey i live in a fifth wheel right now but i have friends that are able to uh you know hook me up uh, at this point in my life i would not be able to to get a, get you know to hold these knives and to play with them and and just appreciate everything that goes into these just wouldn't be able to appreciate my friends for that um and you know what we got another one in the pipeline we're going to be doing this week um so it'll be it will be Knives That Are Worth More Than My House, episode number two, coming up. Also, I'll be uh, posting another video here in a day or so. Um, I'm up to the number of subscribers I need to do my giveaway, but I'm going to have to post a video and have you all comment, um, all my subscribers comment, on uh, that they've seen that video and that they understand the only way I can get their name in the, in the, pin, in the uh, drawing is if they comment on that video. That's the only way I can do it because it only shows me uh, those people who publicly show their subscriptions. So, it's the only way I can do it. Sorry, guys. If someone's got a better idea, let me know. Uh, once again, thanks again. Thanks for watching the video. And uh, tell your friends. Like it. Subscribe it. And uh, also send them on over to Jim Skelton. That dude's a hoot. And he makes some awesome videos. And he has some beautiful knives. Peace.